Hello, welcome to my tech fan. Kafango sent me a CD printer for the review, and this is the newest member of the legendary NDS3 series. This is NDS3 V3 SE. And according to the specifications, this is a great printer even for the beginner users because it can be assembled uh, very quickly and almost uh, no need for the settings so setup. Let's see those specifications. The dimensions are standard 220 and 220 millimeters in X and Y direction and 250 along the Z axis. It has auto leveling sensor. It has a die drive extruder and that's the sprite extruder, which is great. I already have experienced that with the S1 series. Uh, the hot end can be heated up to 260 degrees Celsius according to the specifications, but this means it has the Teflon line hot end, so you shouldn't go above 250 or 240 degrees Celsius if you want to use it continuously on this temperature. Uh, big change for me on Y axis, it used the linear rods and linear bearings and not those uh, rubber wheels. And also important is that it doesn't use those leveling knobs and no springs anymore. So this means the bed is fixed and no need for the manual leveling. Great! So this is big steps to be user friendly in the printer. And uh, I hope the others will follow this example. And also it is faster than the previous versions. But um, let's see what's in the box. The packaging is good. Everything is uh, deeply inside this uh, black foam. Content of the package, the base and the gentry, which are completely assembled, only we have to put them together. User manual screen, a spool holder, some tools and bolts for the assembling. And I can see that this is really a budget printer because we have these uh, sample filaments, it's not even on the spool. At least we have the pliers, but no metallic tweezers in the package. Message to every company, please put some metallic tweezers in the package. It is so useful and so cheap too. Thank you. This is a spare nozzle, brass 0.4 mm, and if I remember correctly, it has the same size like on Ender 5 S1. First step of assembling is connecting the gentry and the base. And first I thought it will be easier if I move it to the edge of the desk, but then I figure out it is easier to rotate it because I can see the holes. Two screws on the back side. Next is uh, assembling the spool holder to the frame. And this is the screen holder attaching with the three bolts the screen, removing the protection foil and then connecting the cables. This is for the extruder and the hot end, securing plastic and connecting some wires. This is for the X motor and this is for the Z axis. The voltage check if it's set correctly for my country and it is and you can find this switch on the back side of the printer. Let's take a closer look. So this is some kind of uh, textured PI sheet or something like that. I already saw this earlier and the filament sticks sometimes too good to it. Good thing that this is uh, notched and we have two aligning pins so it is easy to place it back in the same position. And uh, it's a little bit soft uh, so this would be a problem if you print some ABS. Of course you need an enclosure and if you have some warping, uh, even if it sticks good, it may leave the corners. But usually with this printer you want to print, I know, PLA or PETG. And here we can see these uh, steel rods, uh, linear rods and uh, linear bearings for the y-axis motion. There is a belt and we have a tensioner on the back side, but it's only a screw, which is uh, fine because we don't have to do this uh, too often. On the side we can see the full size SD card and the USB type C plug. From the bottom I can see some thermal insulation on this uh, heat bed, but we have a margin of approximately 40 millimeters or something like that. Later I will check with thermal camera how equal is the heating. And ah, interesting, uh, there is a load cell, but only in this one corner, so it will be triggered when the nozzle press the bed. We also have a CR touch here and properly it will be used for the auto leveling. And uh, there is a part cooling uh, fan shroud and the part cooling is from the front side mostly. Unfortunately, it covers the view to the nozzle. Maybe for beginners this will be a useful animation. So this is our extruder nozzle and this is the sear touch. And uh, when the sear touch goes down, it will move the pin and uh, it will be triggered. Then it uh, retracts and the question is what is this uh, Z offset? And usually we use a piece of paper and then move down the nozzle until we get that uh, friction. So then we know what is the Z offset. But in this case we have this, um, let's say this is the load cell and it will move down and uh, when it's triggered then it will know what is the Z offset and this will be done automatically. 
an interesting change that this stepper motor for the x-axis is from the inside and not from the outside. This may be useful if you want to place this inside enclosure. For example, you know, we have that tent creality enclosure and uh, it's much easier when we don't have this uh, stepper motor sticking out. On x-axis we have a uh, V-slot wheels, three of them, and this one has the eccentric nut for the adjusting. On z-axis uh, we have these uh, V-slot wheels, but only from the inside. Uh, from the outside I'm not really sure, because we don't have that V-slot groove here. It's a little bit different. I already mentioned that we have a dual z-axis and they are connected with this timing belt, because on this second one we don't have the stepper motor. So this stepper motor will lift the both sides. The strain relief for the hotback cable could be a little bit better, I don't like when it's moving. It will do the job, but um, I saw a better solution. Even the Ender 3S1 has the better solution for this. I hate when the copper is cutting the price, resulting a little bit less safety, because this was a very good solution on the Ender 3S1, but this, this is far from perfect. The screen is also noticeably smaller compared to the Ender 3S1. Uh, let's use this object for the reference. So here you can see side by side and uh, definitely much smaller is the screen on the Ender 3 V3 SE. And I already mentioned earlier, unfortunately we don't have a filament runout sensor on this printer. It's time to turn it on and then you will see the biggest advantage of this printer compared to the S1 for example. English and basically we are in the menu. Let's start with the leveling and everything should be done automatically. It starts with the homing and preheating the nozzle, and then it cleans the nozzle, but here I didn't insert the filament, and then it set the Z offset automatically, and then it starts with automatic leveling. The leveling was finished and it was completely automatic and uh, this is the result from it and I can see quite big differences. On, in my case on front side 0.5 millimeters, on the back side uh, minus 0.25, so <laughs> approximately 0.7 millimeters is the difference between the back and front side, but everything will be compensated during the printing. Confirm. I can insert the filament and it's ready for printing. Preheat PLA. And I will start the printing with this uh, sample filament, but uh, if this is for the beginners, they should place this on some spool, because the beginner users don't know that he has to pay attention that it will not tangle or jam or something like that. It may fall down from the spool holder and similar. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, cutting under 45 degree angle. And then I can insert and load the filament. I can do it manually, but I can do it from the screen too. And there is it. And I'm missing a metallic tweezers on the package. As always for the first print, I'm suggesting something which was prepared by the manufacturer. Print. Hmm, only one sample print. It's a cat. Mm -hmm. I can choose if I want to do the calibration or not. I already did a few minutes ago, so it's off. And then I can confirm. This is the first layer and I can see the start is perfect, so even if I have to set the Z offset myself, uh, I wouldn't change anything even when I see this kind of uh, first layer. Hmm, this is now the third layer and it is significantly faster than older Ender 3s. And by default the nozzle temperature is 200 degrees Celsius and 60 on the bed. The screen is not so well smaller compared to the S1, but it is very comfortable for the use, so the design is quite good. And I'm just checking what kind of settings I can do. Print speed, nozzle temperature, bed temperature, fan speed and the Z offset if it is necessary to change it. The screen is okay, but I'm missing a lot the current Z coordinate. Interesting, this cat is completely hollow inside, there is no infill. Printing is at 60%, looks okay. The printing is finished in 1 hour and 24 minutes. And I will wait until the bed cools down because I have the feeling that it sticks too good to it. Mm, yes, even for this purge line I can feel that it sticks too good. Immediately one more thing I'm missing from this smaller screen and that's the bed or nozzle temperature. Because you should never turn off the printer when the temperature is above 50 degrees Celsius on the nozzle. And uh, what is the temperature on the bed? Should I start with removing or not? 
Of course, I can see it if I go into prepare and there are the temperatures, but they should be visible from the main screen too. And when the bed cools down, it's a little bit easier to remove it. Let's start with this purge line and oh, it sticks too good. Definitely, I think we shouldn't go above 50 degrees Celsius on this bed surface. And maybe I will even raise a little bit that Z offset manually. The print quality of this cat is great. There is no stringing between ears, but there are no hard parts. There is no big overhang here. And also it's a tricky, the skin is not smooth and uh, we cannot see the real print quality. But uh, never mind, it's time to prepare the slicer and slice my own object. I measured the noise too from exactly half meter distance. There are some peaks from time to time, but the average was approximately 54 decibels. And I also checked the bed heating and it is very equal. So I mentioned that there is a thermal insulation from the bottom, but there is a margin of 40 millimeters approximately, but the heating is quite equal. And it's time to prepare the slicer and it, I'm using Creality Print here and I, this printer is in the list. I can edit. And this uh, D6 cube or calibration cube will be the first object which will be printed. I save the GCO to the SD card. Print. Dice. Confirm. And again, a perfect first layer. This is now already the third one, so it's speeded up now. Hmm. The printing is okay, this is the top layer, this is the bottom layer, the side surfaces, but it still sticks too good to this uh, print surface, so maybe I really have to raise the Z offset or reduce the bed temperature even more. I clean the bed and next printing will be the benchy. And according to the slicer, this is one hour benchy. And another perfect first layer. After half hours the printing is at 52% and it's ok so far. Printed in exactly one hour. Removing of the thin layers like this purge line or brim may be very tricky so be careful with that. First layer, great overhang, no stringing, nice bridging, so basically only one problem I can see with this benchy, and that's it is printed in one hour, but the quality is perfect. In my family this is very popular phone holder, and it is printed in spiral or waste mode, and some older Marlin printers had problems with this uh, type of the printing, but uh, no problems here. The moving of the pad is smooth, no breaks and uh, similar. Printed in 51 minutes and I raised the Z offset by 0.05 millimeters. And of course this is smaller surface, but removing is perfect. And it works. And then I removed this uh, sample filament in white color. And this Hyper PLA in red color will be the next material I will use. Insetting was without any problems. And I'm printing this octopus. And uh, this is a test for two reasons. So one, this will be a longer printing, uh, more than four and a half hours. And the other, it uses a bigger surface on this uh, bed. But as you can see, every element sticks screwed. Printing is at 40% and removing all these elements will be tricky because I have to be careful not to break the connection. It was finished during the night and now the bed is completely cooled down. And now the removing. So conclusions for the end. Well, as owner of V2S1 S1 Pro, I can see some setbacks on this printer, but none of them are deal breakers. Maybe one thing I made at the reality, and that's this strain relief, because it was much better solution on older versions, and here it is on edge of acceptable. Now I understand that they must cut the price, because this is $200 in US, of course different countries, different price, 
but it looks like uh, these things uh, fit in this price. But of course, I can see a lot of improvements, and the most important is that uh, load cell, and thanks to that, uh, that Z offset will be set automatically. Also, we don't have the levering knobs and springs, and uh, we don't have to adjust the rubber wheels on Y axis, which is the hardest. Uh, we don't have to adjust on Z axis neither. On X axis, uh, well, there is a possibility for adjusting, but it is already set in the factory. So basically, I don't have to set uh, anything on this printer. Now about the Z offset, uh, be careful. If you get the same uh, print sheet, the object may stick too good to it. Okay, in my case, uh, I never go above 50 degrees Celsius on the hotbed temperature, maybe even lower, maybe I'll try uh, 45. And also, I raise a little bit that Z offset, which was set automatically. Uh, from minus 2.06, I go up to minus 2.00. And with this, uh, it sticks very good, but it is not impossible to remove it. Okay, but don't worry, I mean, uh, you can buy different print sheets for this uh, printer. Um, I don't know why they insist on this one, because I think this is the same or very similar like on S1. But on S1 Pro, it is great. It, it sticks good, but it is uh, much easier to remove the objects from it. Soon there will be a follow-up video because I'm still analyzing it and I'm collecting all the differences between this printer and NS3-S1. Because I was confused a little bit, so S1 is older printer but for higher price and um, I want to see what are all those differences between these two printers and uh, help uh, you if you want to make the decision which one you want to buy. I hope you will follow me to that video too. Until that, thank you for watching and happy printing!